Hello, welcome to our first uh, installment of the Collier Top 10. This time around, we're going to talk about our top 10 catchers of all time, who we think, uh, into each of us, who we think uh, are the best of the best of all time in baseball. So, here we go. Number, number 10. 10. All right, at number 10 for me, uh, it was a tough choice. I cut somebody at the last minute. This guy is the greatest offensive catcher of all time. It's Mike Piazza. Uh, defensively, he's not a great catcher. He was a little bit less than average during his time. However, uh, I think being the greatest offensive catcher should establish you to get in this list. So my number 10 is Mike Piazza. I like the choice, but uh, one of the things about Piazza, you got to consider what your criterion for your top 10 are. You know, what is our criteria for the top ten? Are we going by all offense? Are we going by all defense? A combination of both. Do we like him? We dislike him. And Piazza, I, I like the choice in the top ten. I just think you're a little low. Justin, what do you got? I'm right on cue. Piazza, number ten. All right. Okay. Hey. Good job. I got you there. One thing that I got on top ten, I like the guy who's a switch hitter. I like the guy who caught some great pitchers. Won a lot of world championships. I got Jorge Posada as my number 10 catcher, New York Yankees. Wow. Switch hitter, should be a Hall of Famer, will get a lot of votes for the Hall of Fame as he goes in, in a great class with the Yankees, won a lot of pennants. Without Jorge, they didn't. So I'm, I'm with Jorge on number 10. I, uh, I debated whether or not putting Jorge on my top 10. Uh, he couldn't outrank two more Yankees. You, may, you. You, may or my, you may or may not see on my list. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Jorge, he was my favorite Yankee. Uh, during their run, but he just missed it for me. Hip hip, hooray! Yes, we all like that. And again, Piazza. I've got. I think you guys are a little low on Piazza, but uh, you know, you guys probably didn't include Jorge. I like him because he was a winner, mm -hmm. and I like him because he was a switch hitter and he was a solid defensive catcher. He wasn't the best defensive catcher, but he did catch the likes of Rivera. He caught CC. He caught a lot of great pitchers, and he made a lot of great plays and come up with a lot of big hits. And I think he's going to get a lot of consideration for the Hall of Fame. So he's in my top ten. All right. Number, Number nine. nine. Number nine. One of the greatest Cardinals of all time, Yadier Molina. Good choice. He can throw people out. He can hit the ball. He can do it all. What do you guys think? Uh, no, I think uh, Yadier's a great choice. Uh, his He hasn't played as long as a lot of the other guys have on my list, uh, or probably all the other guys' list too. However, uh, defensive master, and I, th I think he is, is very deserving of the list, yeah. Again, I think you're a little low. Yadier, in my opinion right now, he is hands down one of the, one of the only two catchers playing right now that belong on the list. Yadier is, with, just look at it this way, without Yadier Molina in the lineup, the Cardinals are a losing ball club. And they are in the playoffs every year for the past seven years because Yadier Molina is the catcher. I think you're a little low, but he definitely is in the top ten. Mm -hmm. uh, my number nine uh, is a guy that for the first half of his career, uh, he was an undoubtedly Hall of Famer. He's won an MVP. He was an All-Star uh, 14 different times. And he's probably one of the greatest arms in the history of the baseball. My number nine is Ivan Rodriguez. Pudge, good choice. Uh, the only reason I put him at number nine and not higher, though, is because the second half of his career, uh, he kind of went on a downhill slide just a little bit. Not a great offensive guy at the end of his career. He started to shrink a little bit. Yeah. He's right. <laughs> Well, the, the whole thing that he's got this little thing hanging over his head, and that's one of the reasons he's not a Hall of Famer right now. He's been suspected. I'm not going to say he's done it, but he's been suspected. And I had an umpire, a major league umpire friend of mine, that said the major league players affectionately called him the incredible shrinking man yeah. after the 2002 crackdown on, in the major leagues. Uh, his numbers speak for themselves. Right. Tremendous catcher. I go at number nine with somebody that was during my, uh, when I was about your age. I thought he was one of the only guys that, that uh, fought Johnny Bench for top honors during his day, and that was Gary Carter. I think Gary Carter is, is there, the kid, got a world championship, played for a few different teams, tremendous catcher, and he's a Hall of Famer. I got Gary Carter at number nine. Uh, Gary Carter, excellent choice. Uh, 
Uh, for a long time, I think in his career, he was highly underrated. And I think it's taken more years uh, since his induction to the Hall of Fame where people have realized just how good Gary Carter was. Like the older I get, the better I was? Pretty much. Kind of like that? Gary Carter. Yeah. Gary Carter. <laughs> <laughs> Number, Number eight. 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 All right. We're down to the Elite Eight. And at number eight, I have the second best active catcher playing for the Giants. Five years in the big leagues, almost six. The guy's got an MVP, three rings, a rookie of the year, a batting championship. And he is above league average on throwing runners out. Hardly any pass balls. Does see a few wild pitches. Handles a great pitching staff in San Francisco. Buster Posey at number eight. Uh, that was a tough one for me. Uh... I'll tell you right now, he didn't make my top ten uh, just because I don't think he's played long enough. However, I mean, you can't deny the MVP, the batting title, the three-word series. I know you can't give that up. However, the reasoning that I chose not to put on my list is that Buster Posey plays first base, and I think more in his career, when he gets to the end of his career, he's going to start being more of a first baseman. And his catching career... Like, he might not get as many seasons as a catcher than some of these other guys did. i got to throw one more stat at you about Buster Posey. At this time in his career, and we are at August the 16th, 2015, at this time in Buster Posey's career, he has a higher OPS plus based upon ballpark than any other catcher in the history of baseball. I was close. I was close to putting him on there. Do you agree with Buster Posey? Actually, uh, Buster Posey is my number eight choice. <laughs> Buster, Buster Posey! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> All right. You got any other reasons? Because he is just so gosh darn cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Commercial star, too. Well, my number eight uh, has been mentioned already. You think you know who it is? Who you got? Uh, Cardinal, great so far, Yadier Molina. Uh, I think it's been seven or consecutive gold gloves so far. Uh, I do put him on there based on from about 2007 or 8 to now or so. Like his first few years in the league, he had to get his feet wet a little bit with the offense. But if you look at Yadier uh, for the past four or five seasons, he's been one of the best hitting catchers in baseball, if not for Buster Posey. Uh, however, defensively, nobody compares or is even in his league. He is 15 percentage points above the league average when it comes to catching runners stealing uh, so there's nobody uh, actually excuse me it's 16 percent better and that's the highest percentage on my list so anybody anybody so like he is probably without a doubt well I guess not be able to doubt with some speculation but uh, without a doubt like best defensive catcher our day maybe in the past 50 years Yadier, Yadier Molina can't stop there man Yadier's really really good yeah and without like I told you without him the Cardinals have a below 500 record with the team that they have now. Tremendous choice. Number, number seven. seven. All right, my number seven. Uh, played for one of my all-time favorite teams, the Philadelphia Athletics. Played for the Detroit Tigers as well. Uh, only had about a 13-year career. Was cut short uh, due to getting hit in the head. Um, Mickey Cochran. Uh, now, defensively, uh, he was great defensively. Uh, he was a little bit better than average. Uh, didn't throw out runners as well as people in his day. He was at negative 3% compared to the league average. However, he had two MVPs, and he won three World Series, and his OPS was beyond compared to any catcher of his time, or probably any catcher ever. Uh, Mickey Cochran was a lifetime 320 hitter as a catcher. Uh, just a leader team like Con uh, under Connie Mack, and I don't know who the manager was at Detroit at the time, but uh, Mickey Cochran, one of the best offensive catchers, in the history, I'll put him up in comparison to Mike Piazza. Not enough home run numbers, but just batting average wise, OPS wise, uh, Mickey Cochran is my number seven. Who you got? I went up to Brooklyn with the whole Jackie Robinson thing going down and picked up a guy named Roy Campanella for my number seven catcher. Excellent choice. Now, this guy was just as good playing in the major leagues as he was playing in the Negro leagues. And he dominated both, really. He could throw people out. He could hit a ton. Um, and when he did come over to the majors with that whole transition, everybody started picking up, you know, guys. So uh, just because of his integration and uh, his overall amazing performance, 
Number seven, Roy Camp. The only thing I got against Campanella is he only played 10 years. And man, it's just really hard to put somebody in the top 10 when they play 10 years. But I got Campanella at number seven. <laughs> yeah, but he, he played in the Negro Leagues too. I agree there. And, and I do have him at number seven. The guy beat the Yankees in the World Series with the Dodgers, the only Brooklyn championship. The guy won a couple MVPs. I'm a fan. And I got him at number seven also. I'm in agreement with you 100%. The guy hit for power. And I've actually watched some of those old ball games on YouTube, watching Campanella play. The guy was good. The guy was flat good. And if you'll look at the numbers, Roy Campanella has one of the top three highest percentages of throwing base runners out of all time. Tremendous defensive catcher. Not only could hit, but could also play behind the plate. I got him at seven also, even if he had a 10-year career. Number, number six. 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 Not to go back to number seven, but my number six was a number seven. Mickey Cochran. Yeah. Um, he was just, you know, amazing. 320 hitting catcher. Yeah, he said it all. So, Mickey Cochran, number six. Uh, that's a very really good choice. Uh, what's your number six? I got Piazza at number six. Wow. I let offense wow. overshadow defense. I, I'm just going to tell you, Piazza, a little bit below average defense, the best offensive catcher in the history of the game. With a lower OPS plus, by the way, than Buster Posey. Just by a little bit. Just by a little bit. But Piazza, w wow. I mean, 63rd round draft pick because he's Tommy Lasorda's spaghetti cousin, whatever. The guy could flat hit the baseball. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, I I just squeaked in Piazza just because like I thought I thought defense overshadowed a little bit, but I still think his his inclusion is necessary. Uh, my number six has been mentioned, and this was their number seven. My number six is Roy Campanella, uh, three time MVP by the way in three. the nineteen fit in nineteen fifties, eight time All Star, like eight years in a row he was an All Star, so he was the catcher of the National League during the 1950s. And I did look at his last two years. Uh, he was taking a little bit of a dip in his last couple seasons because he was getting in his mid to late 30s. Uh, however, uh, offensively, nobody could compare to him in the day of the 1950s or maybe 1960s for that matter. Uh, Campanella also uh, was a plus 15% above league average throwing out runners. Uh, so defensively amazing, offensively amazing as a catcher. He's any, everything that you would want, and he was an anchor, along with Jackie Robinson, for the Brooklyn Dodgers in the 1950s when they were at their peak of a team. So, my number six, Roy Campanella. Number, number five. five. All right, we're into the six-pack, and we're down to five to go. And I've got the five best ones. Of course, mine are right. <laughs> at number five, I've got a guy that won four consecutive world championships, caught with the best of them. Babe Ruth was on his team, Lou Gehrig on his team. Championship caliber all the way, hit over 300. A defensive marvel, caught some of the toughest pitchers of his day to catch. Bill Dickey, number five, offense, defense, top five. My number five. Bill Dickey for the New York Yankees. <laughs> By the way, we got to tell you, we did not look at each other's no. list. This is cold coming into you guys. Yeah. So this is why we, you know, it seems, up, but it is. We didn't look at each other's list. Yeah, again, Bill Dickey, uh, I, he won four in a row, but he also, that was with the Joe DiMaggio, Lou Gehrig team, and he also won in 32 uh, with the Ruth team. So, like, he had five World Series under his belt, maybe six. I might be wrong about that number. I'm not sure. Uh, he was an 11-time All-Star. So, again, one, another one of those catchers for a decade that was the best of the best. And he can throw out runners. The guy hit 300 perennially. He's from Arkansas, isn't he? He is from Arkansas. He's from Arkansas. So yeah. are we. So are we. So we like Bill Dickey. Yeah. What's your number five? Five. I have a guy uh, that I had to go way back in time for this guy. He's so old, he invented shin guards. <laughs> His name is Roger Bresnahan for my number five catcher. He could steal bases. He could lay down bunts. He could do everything that you don't expect a catcher to be able to do. He was a real good athlete, and uh, he was the premier catcher of his day. Um, McGraw said he was the best. Roger Bresnahan. The guy invented shin guards. Come on, he's <laughs> got to be on the list. He was on my short list, uh, meaning that I, I was really close to choosing him. The only thing that kept me from putting him in my top ten was just amount of time 
in the in the big leagues. Uh, I really wanted to put him in there because yeah, I mean, he thought it was like, hey, shin guard. So I mean, he was a very innovative person in baseball. But I was just like, he didn't like some of the numbers or didn't match up for me. But I still think he's still an all time great Hall of Famer. It's hard to argue any of these guys. It's very very difficult to argue with it. Um, I'm a big fan of Roger Brett. He's one of the very few catchers that ever hit leadoff. McGraw had this guy hitting leadoff in the 1905 World Series. He just doesn't do what you expect a catcher to do, which is why I love him so much. And his spinner baseball card rocks. Yeah, it's good. It's really, really good. Number, number four. four. My number four has already been mentioned by one other person. Uh, this person was a Montreal Expo, and he was a New York Met and a couple other teams. Uh, my number four is Gary Carter, number four. Uh, the reason that I rank him so high, uh, won a World Series, caught for 19 seasons, had uh, 11 All-Star appearances. Uh, he was the best catcher, in my opinion, of the 1970s and into a little bit of the 80s. Uh, Gary Carter is the only person on this list, besides, beside one guy, and I've already mentioned him, Ivan Rodriguez, that had a plus 25 war in both defensive war and offensive war. Gary Carter, my number four. Number four, Josh Gibson. Uh, the Babe Ruth of the Negro Leagues. He caught, he hit home runs, he played with Satchel Paige. He won uh, Negro League World Series championships. He lost Negro League World Series championships. Um, he uh, legend, uh, allegedly hit like 800 home runs. The guy was uh, compared to Babe Ruth. Um, it's hard to leave him off the greatest catcher's yeah, list. I agree. I agree. And I think he belongs in the top five. I got number four, Josh Gibson. I can't fight with Josh, Josh Gibson. I left it to all major leaguers, and so I so I left Josh Gibson off. But I am going to say, the stats that we get on Josh Gibson are incomplete. So I go by reputation on him, and from everything that we hear and read, the guy is definitely one of the top catchers of all time. I went with all major leaguers, and my number four is Mickey Cochran. He's been mentioned, world champion, both world champion on the A's and on the Tigers, tremendous ball player, and. He was a big time friend of Ty Cobb, so I'm good there. Anybody that can make Ty Cobb into a friend has got to have some stuff going for him. So Mickey Cochran is my number four, and we've already talked about his stats. Number, number three. All right, number three, however you want to put it up. Everybody's going to disagree with me, and that's fine, because... This guy is the best catcher of all time. But when you get to one, two, and three, you got to take the statistics and throw them out. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So my number three is Yogi Berra. He won 11 <laughs> World Series championships. If this guy's not in your top three, you're a moron. Let's move on. Let's move on, guys. Okay. Uh, Yogi Berra, great choice. Uh, my number three is was his number four. I put in Josh Gibson. Uh, I almost went Gibson number one, but the only reason I didn't put him one is because of the fact that he never played in the major leagues. However, I think folklore and legend of this guy would suggest that I mean he undoubtedly would have been one of the greatest catchers in the major leagues if he were allowed to be if he were allowed to play during the time for not for segregation. Uh, I mean, any, like 800 home runs. He was a solid fielding catcher. I mean, if you just look at pictures of the guy and just like read the legends that all these other players have said things about him. Josh Gibson is one of the greatest players ever, not, if not just catcher. Uh, I mean, it's just sad that we don't have the statistics to back ourselves up with that. We kind of have to go with the literature. Uh, His Hall of Fame plaque's cool too. Yeah, he's at yeah, and I've touched it. So, uh, but Josh Gibson, without a doubt, in the top three for me. I, I would like to put him at number one, but I just can't because of the, the not having the numbers, uh, solid numbers that are recorded. But Josh Gibson, number three. I'm going to go against all the grain. My guy's already been mentioned by the other two, but i got to put him here. Top three, Yadier Molina. Wow. I just, I am just there. The wow. guy, I watched him the other night throw a guy out from his knees on a ball that bounced in the dirt, and it was amazing. This guy is nothing but a winner. Every time he laces him up and gets behind the plate for the Cardinals, they win. This guy has been in the playoffs almost every year. 
He hits the most clutch hits, goes to right field, up the middle. He always seems to be in the right place at the right time and doesn't make mistakes. I've got him as the third best catcher of all time. I just think he, because he is so integral a part of that St. Louis team, which is now the dominant team of the major leagues for the past 10 years. I, I think that's really high for Molina just because offensively he doesn't compare with who we said. Now, like if you want to say defensively, I, I would put him probably at number one if for that matter. Uh, I mean, yeah, I just want to see him. I want to see Yadier, and this, we're shooting this in August of 2015. I would like to see Yadier, what he's like the next three or four seasons, to see if he can keep hitting that, hitting that 285, 300 clip and to push himself a little bit further offensively because I think defensively he'll stay steady. Uh, but for me to put him anything higher than top five, I would want to see a bigger offensive push. But, hey, you know, it's your, it's your top three, and I can see exactly why you would want to put him that high. And he always kills the Reds. <laughs> the guy kills the Reds. And I'm a Reds fan. Yeah. Number, Number two. two. We're down to the top two. And I'm going to tell you, I kicked this around. I had a very, very difficult time picking who was the number one catcher. So the other guy's the, the first runner-up. The two that I have in mind, you guys probably know, but I'm going to go with number two, Johnny Bench, second best catcher of all time. And the reason I say this is these statistics stand out. Johnny Bench didn't throw as many runners out in his career as the number one guy. Johnny Bench had more pass balls in his career than the number one guy. Johnny Bench let more wild pitches go by than the top guy. Johnny Bench did not have as many RBIs as the top guy. Johnny Bench was the second best catcher of all time, and most people are going to say was the best catcher of all time. And I got no arguments. I'm a Reds fan, and I think Johnny Bench is right there. I'm a, I watched his Major League debut in 1968. The guy is phenomenal. I just don't think he's the greatest of all time. He did win two world championships. He did play in four world series. He did play in six playoffs. The guy was amazing. He's number two on my list. I'm going to have to agree with him. I got Johnny Bench at number two. There's one more guy out there that I think is a whole lot better than Johnny Bench. Okay, uh, hold on. Okay, they got both Johnny Bench number two. My number two uh, has been mentioned before. Uh, he's got a ha two handfuls of world series. He's got three MVPs. Uh, he played expert defense, threw runners out wonderfully. Uh, Yogi Berra, and I'm a huge Yankees fan, but Yogi Berra is my number two. Uh, just for the reasons, and, I, and actually, I'll give you more of the reason when I tell you my number one, uh, and I think I know who maybe your number one is. I don't know who yours is yet, but, uh, but Yogi Berra just got beat out by my number one on one statistic that I think kind of over, overrode it, um, but Yogi Berra, without a doubt, I mean, he, you can swip, swip swap Bench and Berra. Uh, but Yogi did play for the Yankees in just their dominant heyday, uh, and he was probably the, one of the sole reasons they were, I mean, him and Mantle and a couple other guys, but uh, Yogi Berra was the sole, one of the, the, the anchor of the Yankees. So I wanted to give him number one, I really did, but uh, I gave it to somebody else. So Yogi Berra, number two. And finally, and finally, finally, number, number one. one. All right, my number one catcher of all time was previously mentioned by this guy uh, and this guy, Johnny Bench. Now, I know he doesn't have as many World Series as Yogi Berra. Uh, Berra's probably defensively a smidgen better, I guess. Even though Berra wasn't that fabulous at the beginning of his career. But... Uh, I put Bench for this one reason. He was 1.5 war average better per season than any other catcher on this list. Or actually, just Yogi Berra, my bad. He averaged five war a season for a catcher. There's, there's hardly anybody near that. The closest guy on that list was Mickey Cochran or Mike Piazza or Gary Carter. The other guys were a, a, a game and a half behind him. So, like, for his era, he was so dominant and way better than everybody else in, in, during his era that I had to give him number one. Now, Yogi Berra's com, uh, counterpart was Roy Campanella. Johnny Bench did not have a counterpart. He was the best catcher of his time. Nobody compared to it. Two MVPs, two World Series, on, uh, ar arguably 
probably one of the best teams of all time, the 75 Reds. Uh, I mean, you can argue it, but Bench, I think, is the best. And I, I'm a Yankees fan. I wanted to pick Barra, but I went for Bench. Now, now, like I said earlier, with number one, you got to throw all the statistics out of the window, okay? There's no logic that you can really muster up that'll tell you who the greatest catcher of all time is. You just got to go with your heart and your instinct on this one. So I reach all the way back into 1985 and fish Matt out knows. Jim Sunberg for the Kansas City <laughs> Royals. He won the World Series in 1985, hitting sixth for these guys. There's no better catcher in the world if you can win a World Series with Kansas City. Jim Sundberg is my number one catcher of all time, not because I was born in 1985 and the Royals are my favorite team, but because he was the greatest catcher of all time, Jim Sundberg. I, I do have to say Jim Sundberg was not on my short list. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you did mention him. Did he play for the Rangers for some time? Too? I have no idea. I think he played Jim, for the Royals in 85. Yeah, but like, Sun, hey, he was around for a long time. And <laughs> he, he was. He was a really solid stout catcher. Yes, he was. So, uh, hey, you know, going for Jim Sunberg at number one, I don't think anybody in the world, but except for maybe Jim Sunberg's fan club, will go for him as the number yeah, one catcher of all time. Just wait till shortstop lists. You'll see Buddy Bianca <laughs> Lana on there. <laughs> all right, so number one, uh, Jim Sunberg. Okay, I'm going with number one with Yogi, and here's my reasoning. Yogi played for the Yankees during the 40s, 50s, and 60s. During that time, 11 times, he led the Yankees in RBIs. He played with DiMaggio, he played with Mantle, he played with Maris, he played with all the studs that the Yankees could muster, and this guy led the greatest team ever assembled in RBIs 11 times. He won three MVPs. He has a, a higher percentage of throwing runners out than Johnny Bench. He has a higher OPS plus than Johnny Bench or most any of the other catchers. His average home run for per season is two less than Johnny Bench. He has less pass balls, less wild pitches than Johnny Bench. In a caught, he caught within 100 innings the same number of innings as Johnny Bench did. The pitching staff that Johnny Bench had, again, was Sparky Anderson, a lot more pitchers that he had to catch because Sparky used a lot more relievers than Casey, but Casey basically invented the bullpen. And Yogi was the guy that was capable of catching the bullpen. Yogi Berra, 10 World Series and 17 full Major League seasons. I got nobody better than Yogi, but none of these are wrong, including Jim Sunberg. All of these guys can be, cons you go back and look at them in high school. Look at them when they first got into minor leagues. These guys were the best players of their day. You can't really, you, you can, and what we welcome for you guys too, and Gentry's going to tell you, we welcome you guys to comment on these videos and comment with your top 10 list so that people can see them. We, we, we get a kick out of looking at yours as much as you get out of looking at ours. Again, we go back and, and look at the top 10 catchers that we have of all time of today. I'm sorry I left Josh Gibson off. There's other guys that got snubbed too. Yeah. Uh, Some of the guys that got snubbed. Go uh, ahead. Carlton Fisk. Carlton Fisk. Uh, I, I want to give him a mention. Uh, Michael Rivera. <laughs> uh, Ernie Lombardi. Uh, I didn't put in Roger Bryson. I didn't put in uh, Bozy. Uh, Ted Simmons was really close for me. And another guy that was really, really close for me, but since he's been playing, first base the past two seasons Joe is Joe Maurer. Joe Maurer. I, I really wanted to put Joe Maurer on this list, but I, I think he stopped catching a little bit too early. Another guy that got snubbed, Gabby Hartnett. Oh, yeah. I, I took him out for Mike Piazza. Took him out for Piazza. Hartnett, yeah. tremendous catcher, did not win a World Series. That, that's what I went to. And there was a lot of inconsistencies in some of the seasons that he had. He would play 100 games, then play 80. Like He would, just, he would have those off seasons, and I, I was looking for consistency, like year to year to year to year. Anybody you snubbed, Justin? Uh, yes, there is a guy that I snubbed off my list, so I could put Jim Sunberg on there. It was Pudge Rodriguez. Now I snubbed this. Pudge. I snubbed Pudge because I didn't want to include any steroid guys on there. You can't. You can't confirm that. I you mean, can't like, confirm it, but yeah. you do the same thing that the sports writers are doing right now, and that's why he's not in the Hall of Fame. They suspect it, yeah. and we're not going to say that he did it. Uh, no accusatory thing here. No, no. We're not going to say that he did it, but I understand. 
But hey, uh, thanks for watching our first installment of Top 10. Uh, we're going to probably, actually definitely do some more of these. Uh, hey, in the comments, maybe down below, if you do want to comment, maybe ask us what you want to see next, like first baseman managers, center fielders, whatever. So uh, let us know, and we'll work on it. So we appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks a lot. Stay tuned for the top 10 bat boys of all time. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching.